in a sentence? What is the best way we can do this counting? So Benedict, what do you, how do you best can you count the number of words that are in a sentence? Benedict, are you there? If someone is, uh, if you have an idea, just tell us. Let us go. Don't be shy. Uh, highest you is that um, your suggestion might not give us the right solution, which is part of the process. How do we, how, what do you think? How do we can just look at the string we have? We are learning problem solving. So how can we get the words inside there? You know, we have discussed different operation in our previous classes. We have discussed something like uh, join and array or string. We have discussed something like split. We have discussed loop. So in your opinion, how, what do you think? How can you best solve this? What do you think? Mm, so I, I don't have, I don't, I cannot come up with any idea. Maybe now I understand that um, that of counting words, sorry, uh, or counting letters. I can easily um, bring up, but I think I didn't understand that one. So this one will be more, more hard for me to solve. Okay, and well, let's look at this, the sentence we have now. How do we know, in your normal, uh, apart from using code, how do you know the number of words that are here? This is just normal English. Now, how do we know? Let's say uh, how many words make up this sentence. So, how will you count it? Or just count it for us without uh, loudly so that we see your counting process. No, you count one, two, three. Now, just like that one, two, three, four, three. When you get to the last word, call, call the words by the day. And then, when you call the word, you, then you call you add you like one, then you call the next one, you put two. So let's see the process. Ah, let me suggest maybe a uh, write a code I would say after every um, space. Mm -hmm. If you add one, after every space. Exactly. Good. One. This is exactly what uh, we are looking for. You know that in your normal English language or any other language that I know, a word is always separated by another word by a space in writing. Mm -hmm. Oh, is it so what it means if we can break all these words into their various uh, units with the space, then we'll be able to count all those units together, the total units we have gotten, and that is the number of words we have in the sentence. And remember, we treated something like uh, split last yesterday, uh, sorry, on Friday. Do you remember what we did with split? When we have an array and then we split it, we have a sentence like this and we split it. I hope you can remember. So let's say now we say const um, words array. We are just creating a variable called an array of the words in that sentence in our param. So we can then say param dot split. We know that our param, I told you that like when we are doing we are discussing array, we say array dot join or array dot to string. You like for the dot join, you put the separator. In this case, we already have a separator in our sentence. And the separator that separates each word is a space. So we can then say this sentence splits it for us with a space. So we just put a space like this inside the open and close bracket of the split function. And what it's going to do is going to break this word, this sentence by space and put them in here. This one will now become an array. So what we can do now, we can then return where's array dot length. We remember our length as the number of elements in the array. So this is just a simple solution without writing much code. We'll be able to know how many words that are in the sentence. So if we come here and log our sentence again and then put this and where string in string, then we put here number of words. And then we log. You see, we are going to have seven now. So let's verify. Do we have seven words there? 
this is one we is uh, one uh, two learn three problem four solving five using c's and then javascript seven and these have counted the number of words for us in this particular string so what if you are asked count the number of letters with that space you remember in if we want to count the number of letters in the string we can just say the string dot length but in this case we want to remove space so that is the next problem so count the number of letters in a string excluding space so instead of letters so we can then say characters number of characters in a string excluding space so what can we do we now need to remove all the space okay in this uh, sentence there is different ways we can do this you can use a loop look through all the words and check if that word is an empty space if it's an empty space we skip it so let's first take that approach so let's create a function say const that's just a function and valid characters okay and then we can come here and say let our count equals uh, zero and now okay, let's look through it let's let equals zero then let i again should be less than our parents dot length this length is going to be all the element the total number of elements in the string of param and then we can then say if param i this part the num the value at this location is not equals empty string it's not equals empty it's not empty and which can increase and increase our account by one count plus plus and then here we can return our account okay. so to verify let's see use this we can say here count uh, valid characters now what we do here in order to be sure we also need to in the code here let's let's just console log the actual total characters including space let's just put total as and then we put the params dot length okay so let's save our code now we see we have 48 48 y here we didn't put really empty space so let's create empty space and then now we see we have 42 and then we have 48 now why do we have 42 we, in this sentence we have about six space we have one space here two space three space four space five space and six space we have about six space in the sentence so we can have used this approach to remove all the space and return the number total number of characters that are valid in that uh, sentence so there are so many things we can do in string trying to manipulate it in different ways. Okay. Please, uh, uh, with perhaps, what does it mean? I didn't start from the beginning. Let me not get lost a little bit, please. I'm yes. trying to understand. That parameter is just a short uh, code for parameter. You know, I told you in function, when you are creating a function, all the things you put inside the bracket of that open and close you know, of the function, a value that anybody using your function should supply just like here when we now call the function we're not putting the value we are the function is expecting so this value we put here now inside that function is known as param it's recognized as the param if we are putting more than one value we can put another one here and then we need to pass two value to the function so all of them are parameters so you can call the param anything like the first one we have on the top, we didn't call it param. I think we call, gave it a different name. We gave here sentence. See, that is what it's expecting. So you can give your variable depending on what the, you are using it to do. So you can give it the function. I hope it is clear now. Yes, yes. Okay. 
Uh, there is also a very popular question called fish boss uh, in uh, that we have in the kind of problems you can solve. And that fish boss is usually if you go through a number, let's say from 1 to 15, if that number is divisible by 2 or by 3 and not 5, you put a fees. If it is divisible by 5 and not uh, 5 and 3 and not 3, you put a boss. But if 5 and 3 can divide it together with that remainder, or it's a multiple of 5 and 3, you put fees boss. Now, so you know in our counting, so let's say the how this uh, the problem is usually solved. The fees boss problem is actually very famous. If you are uh, you the way you should write a program that prints the number of from zero to one hundred, but for multiples of three, print fees instead of the number, and for the multiple of five, print boss for numbers which are multiples of both five and three you print fees boss i don't know if you let me pick the question here is a very popular question on like fees boss and then um, let me do fees boss javascript i want to pick the question it's a very long sentence so Okay. I hope you can see the screen. Looking for the we are the sentence for the problem is stated. Okay. So let me pick here and uh, paste in our code first. So this is our next problem. Okay. Is uh, do we get the ones we have treated thus far before we go and complicate issues with them all? Hmm? Yes, uh, we understand a little bit, but after much, if you go and sleep over it, you will still understand more. <laughs> okay. I think I should skip this question to when we treat numbers problem. Let's just focus on string today. So that uh, we should be a bit more consistent with the kind of problem we are doing. I hope that's okay. So let's try to get what we have been discussing all this while. Now, you know, the focus is in thinking in terms of problem. So when you have a question posed to you like this, you think in terms of your code now, how you can use code to solve it. So if you look at the first problem we saw, counting the vowels, letters in a sentence, and then we look at the sentence, we look at what we can do, we can check we, we already know what are the vowels in english language so we can check it let each letters in the sentence either to know if it is any of the vowel letter and then i told you you can use your if statement and then but in this case we decided to use our switch statement and then we now have a very clean solution here so we you know switch usually expects a condition here the value you are checking again uh, against and then we say if the value in this location of sentence in this our loop is a we are increasing i if it is e it's also a vowel so we'll also increase our count if it is uh, i we are also increasing our count if it is o we'll also increase our count if it is e u we we'll also increase our count 
But if it is not any of this, they fall under default. We just break and go to the next one. We don't do anything because it is not so. And when we run our code, we look, we saw that our solution worked perfectly. We look at, at the result we got here is that the number of OS we are 14 and we checked it we find out that we are actually 14. Then I told you there are different ways you can solve a problem. And in this particular instance, we use another approach. You we, we created an object and then we added all the uh, voice sounds as properties of this object. And then we have A and we give A to be true. We A is in the is a voice sign, we say true. B is a voice sign, we say true. I say voice sign, we say true. But not all of them that are not voice, we didn't add them in this object. So what we just did here is to still look through the sentence and then we check if VOS, inside this VOE object now, does it contain the letter that is in this location of the sentence? In the, as we look here, let's say we are in the first letter of the sentence, which is in location zero, and we look at it, which is W, is W in this object, the answer is going to be false. That means this count will not increase, the code will jump it. And then we come here, until, when it gets to E, we say, oh, E is there, the code is going to see E in the object, and here will now become true, and E will be increased, accounts will be increased by one. So the thing we will go through each of the letters in this sentence until it finishes, and then we return our account, which is now the total number of vowels that are found by our code in the count vowels uh, function. So we look at the next one, cutting the highest occurring elements, which we have an issue, we'll treat this again. Resolve this and then we'll see what is wrong with it. Then we come to counting words in a string. And then we discuss how do you know that um, what to differentiate a word from another word in a sentence. And then uh, Gene Edu told us that we identify a word in a sentence by a space separating it from other words. And that we all agree, knowing that every word in a sentence is usually separated from the other word. With a space. So we now decided to split all the words in our params or you know, in our sentence, as the case may be, with a space so that we now form an array of those words. Now, uh, like I will show you the other day, if we console log words array now, you see that it's an array that has been created out of the string uh, param. So let's just console log our word array. You look at the value, it's a valid array that has been created for us from using our code. So if you look at our console here now, that my having was array, console.log was array. Okay, um, I also needed to cons uh, comment this line. So if we look at our words array, you see that we now have, instead of the thing to be a normal sentence, a string, we now have it as an array. We separated by comma, I have separated by comma. We now have all of them independently. And then we now just need to return the length of that array. And that is the total number of words in our array. We also look at how to count the letters, uh, characters in the word or in the sentence by without including space. So we had to write a loop here. And uh, in each of the iteration, we check if the element or the item that we are seeing, like W, if it is an empty space. If it is an empty space, we just ignore it. But if it is not an empty space, we increase our count. And at the end, we return our count. And that is giving us the total number of elements in the, uh, the total number of uh, characters, we include excluding space in our sentence. And that is what we've done. So this is how you reason about the solution to a problem. When you see a problem, somebody just tell you, uh, can you determine out of 100 goods, how do you determine the ones that are female or the ones that are male? You now need to begin to identify, look at the goal, what are the common characteristics of the male and of the female. You just look, look, begin to analyze the data. And then you'll be able to find a way that you can uh, group that, that data and differentiate them from the other. At the end of the day, you'll be able to arrive at a solution. So when you are given a problem, you just cool down, think of the data structures you've learned, the data types you've learned, and then you think of 
either you can use loop you can just use any statement you can create an object you can create a number what can you do with what you have been learning that will help you solve that problem and for the instances of what we have been seeing today we have been using loop all the places to go through our string in order to get our data so before we close in just five minutes we're going to look at the last one which is reversing the that's uh, reverse the letters in a string. Reverse the elements in a string. Okay, so we, we know that you can easily reverse the elements in a string, but what, what is the way we can do this? Well, we can still use our loop to do this we can convert our string to an array and then use the array reverse function which we discussed earlier so let's say we want to use our loop we can say now we will create our own reverse string function this is now a string so what we can do here now we can then create our new string and say let um, new string equals our empty string we assign it to empty string and what do we do now? We can then write a loop and say let i equals zero. I is less than params dot length. And then we we'll say i plus plus. Inside here now. Now remember we want to re reverse the string. So instead of starting from zero, what we can do now is to start from params dot length minus one. Okay, and then here now i should be less than or equals zero we need to get to zero so i is less than or equals sorry i should be greater or equals zero not less than and then here instead of i plus plus we now need to do i minus minus so what we can just do here now, and then we can just say new string plus Right in it outside, so we need to be inside new string is uh, plus equals params i. So we have added the last one. Now this loop is going to move from the last of the string and then come to the first. So if we pick up our test case here and then we come under and log this, then we put our Reverse string here, and let's label this reverse string, and then we log this. So oh, I didn't return it, so that is an error. Just a return new string. Okay. So if we look at our code now, we have. Just look at this. This is we turn upside down. We is even now the last one. So when we look at this, is JavaScript turn upside down. The last element becomes the first T, which is the last. If you look at this first one here, you see that T is the last element that is there. But T now is starting our the the reversed sentence. So you see, even the space is there. We are reversing everything the way they occur. If you turn this upside down. You will see that it's the same sentence, only that it's in reverse order. So this is how you reverse. You can reverse a string by moving the, creating a new string, then loop through the other string, the one you want to reverse from the last to the beginning, and add, um, uh, push it to or concatenate the string you created, and you'll be able to do that. Alternatively, we can we can do this with array very easily. We can just come and say. Uh, params dot split. You know that we can split this param, and then um, we can then say reverse. Now, what I'm doing here in JavaScript, you can change function. Normally, you what you would have done is we first do this, the split, add it to a variable, and then reverse the variable. But you can change function, you change split. After split, you can change reverse. You can even change so different function together. So if we put this, you see that this is an array. It has been reversed.
past in form of an IRA. So in order for we to have it in a sentence, remember we now need to do our join. So we have now changed our function. And here now we get the same result we got before, but we just use a single line of code. In this case, we don't need to write the loop. The JavaScript inbuilt functions of reverse, split, and um, uh, join in array will help us to achieve the result. The split turns this uh, param string into an array, then the reverse changes their position, reverse them, and the join turns the reverse array into a string back for us. So you see, this is another way you can do it. There are different JavaScript functions which we discuss and others we didn't discuss that can help you simplify a solution to a problem like this. So either of these works the same, just the same value, and you can use them to reverse a string. Now before we close, I don't know, let's see if, if you have any questions. Any question? Is it clear? Do we get it? For now, so no question. Okay. No problem. So I will continue tomorrow. Tomorrow we will be able to start a bit earlier. So come early. I know today I went to for program and I didn't come back early. But tomorrow I think I should be available early. Then we'll be able to discuss more problems in string. By Wednesday, we also discuss string and on numbers. Then on Thursday and for Fridays, we discuss mainly array problems, array related problems. Although with what we are doing, you've seen that how we uh, we how we are also manipulating arrays, like uh, when we do display it and then we reverse the array drive. We will we'll see subsequently array manipulation. Then before the end of the week, we should have treated so many problems associated to string and arrays and numbers together. Then we will move into creating our first project, calculator project. I think tomorrow what we should do is uh, I think it will take some minutes to go through creating a GTOP profile. In your own, you can see if you've not done that, if you can do that, you can do it. Just go to gtop.com, use your email, and create an account there. Then I'll show you we'll create a repository together where our code, you can be pushing your code there. And when we write code like this, you also write your own, push it there. You will create a project like the calculator project. You push it there. Over time, you'll be able to go back and say, when I was learning this, are the things I did. Also, when you are looking for a job, it will be very helpful because the recruiters might have to visit your GTOP profile to look at the things you've done in, in the past, to know how dedicated you have been and make a decision on either to hire you or not. So we look at different problems tomorrow. One of the things we will possibly look at tomorrow is a case called a palindrome. We, can, we might look at uh, writing a palindrome tomorrow to determine if a string is a palindrome or not. All right, so have a nice day or night till we meet again tomorrow. Thank you.